is Wiz from rcmf.co.uk and today I'm bench testing the new Orange 3 axis flight stabilizer. Uh, this came to me from Hobby King in China. The cost chip was about $13 and what I'm using as a setup here is a Spectrum DX6i transmitter. It's a new model memory selected, fixed wing of course, and uh, there's no exponential endpoint adjustments haven't been changed. It's just absolute vanilla out of the box. A couple of little um, digital servos, 4.8 volt battery pack and a little orange DSM2 compatible receiver. And the purpose of just setting this up vanilla right now and not having the stabilizer in circuit is just to prove that everything is working as it should on the elevator there, the servo furthest away from you, and on the rudder. And everything's moving very smoothly as it should. And if I move the microphone down to the servos themselves, you should hear there's absolutely no sound from the servo, no hunting, no buzzes. Okay, so there we go. That's the basic setup. That's, if you like, our control test. And in just a few moments, I will hook up the flight stabilizer and uh, be back in just a moment. So here we are then. Um, all I've done now is to connect the flight stabilizer box in circuit with the receiver and servos. And basically, you take the output from the receiver into the input of the flight axis uh, stabilizer and the output goes to the servo so it sits in between. I've only got two channels connected up at the moment that's rudder and elevator or pitch and yaw if you prefer and that's in circuit it takes its power from the receiver bus and although there's a, uh, a battery socket on the flight stabilizer box itself it'll pick up the power from the bus just like a pretty much any other receiver out there. Um, things that are worthy of note, there are three uh, potentiometers on the flight stabilizer which you can't see very well here but I will insert some still images at this point. And also you'll note that there are some little dip switches here where you can effectively reverse the uh, the direction of the servo, but more on that in a moment. So that's the setup. Now, as we can see, with the flight stabilizer hooked up, everything still works as it should. But I want you to, and this is the reason for actually doing the control test, I want to just hold the microphone down to the servos again. And you can probably hear them buzzing away uh, like crazy. Now, actually in a model, that will translate to quite a little bit of um, movement on, on the control surfaces, obviously depending on how your throws are set up, etc. But I'll come back to that in a minute. But that, that is an issue I have. And I did wonder if it was something to do with the gain controls here. But moving the gain controls throughout the whole range has absolutely no bearing on the amount of uh, jitter around the neutral point there um, and that jitter is prevalent prevalent throughout the whole range actually so if I move the servos off of their neutral position they're still buzzing a little bit but it's more predominant around uh, around the neutral point so there we have it bit of an issue there but uh, I'll say come back to that in a moment let's have a look at the actual function this is not an autopilot. It won't keep you straight and level. It's a flight stabilizer. What it's designed to do is to, if you like, iron out the wrinkles in flight. So, for example, if you get a sudden gust of wind that hits the tailplane and throws you off yaw, um, it will correct for that. Um, similarly, if you hit a bit of turbulence, a bit of sink, or a bit of, bit of extra lift, there's a propensity to nose up, it will try and correct that. However, if you put it in, in a, for example, a nose down attitude and hold it there, 
it will stay there. This box doesn't try to correct that at all, which is good. That's that's what you need. So what I'm going to do, I've got a vice here on a gimbal, um, and what I'm going to try and do is to simulate a little bit of uh, a little bit of movement. So you're flying along quite happily, and all of a sudden, a little bit of gust of wind catches the tailplane and messes with the uh, your line, flight line. So similarly, nose down the servos will correct. Now you have to be a little bit careful here. If I tip this over there a little bit, you're going to be able to see this a bit better. Here are the gain controls, and here are the dip switches. Now as I say, these dip switches do control the direction of the servo, but not only that, they actually control the direction of compensation movement. So, um, for example, when I first set this up, the rudder channel on the DX6i was reversed. Um, I put this into a model, and rudder was reversed. Plugged it all in, and everything worked fine, except that when it tried to compensate, it actually compounded the problem, and in flight, that might just equate to a downward spiral. So be very careful with how you set up these dip switches. Basically... The flight stabilizer, bo stabilizer box expects the normal output from the transmitter and not reversed. So you can use these dip switches to, to play around with that. But do be very careful when you're setting these things up that you do have the right direction of compensation. You, you pretty much have to work from the rear of the model and imagine wind, for example, getting under one wing or um, a, a gust of wind sort of moving you from side to side to, to make sure you've got that right. So that's the basic function. It does worry me a little bit that these these uh, servos are hunting. Not unduly, but but uh, it is a concern. Uh, in another video, I'm going to hook up my high-tech gear and give that a try. Now, another issue that I have, and it is a small one, but I think it's important if I put that back to its fully neutral position. And I'm going to try and zoom in, or at least get a better position on this for you. I don't know how noticeable this is going to be, but we'll try. Um, we're watching the elevator servo here. I'm going to smoothly move it from one extreme to the other. Now, I don't know whether you can see, but just at this end of down in this, uh, so, sorry, up in this uh, instance, there's a little kick. The servo gives a little kick at the full extent of its travel. It's not truly linear, and it, but it is when it's... Um, when the flight stabilizer is out of circuit, it's quite normal. There's just a little kick, a little bit of hesitation getting to its final point. Now, that doesn't happen on the rudder. I say it's a vanilla setup on the on the transmitter. So the possibility is you could iron this out um, with, with endpoint adjustment and things like that. But again, it concerns me slightly. It's a little bit unpredictable. The other slight problem is, and I suspect it might be a bit of cross-channel interference, here I am moving the rudder from side to side to its full extent, and you can actually see the elevator servo just moving very slightly, again, at the extremities of the rudder movement. I've no idea what that's about, or whether it would be an issue at all in flight, or whether it's something you could program out with endpoint adjustment, or something like that. Um, but again, a bit of a worry, it's probably some sort of cross-channel interference within the box itself. Uh, but that's it. That's, uh, that's the functions. And you can adjust the gain, which gives you the amount of throw, made, uh, the amount of compensatory throw, if you like. So. I've wound it down quite a bit down. You'll see the amount of movement actually is quite slight. And that's going to vary, of course, depending on the airframe and uh, and conditions. It's going to be a tricky one if you've got to get your wing off or whatever to adjust this in situ. And it might need quite a bit of uh, playing with. One, one of the issues I have with this box is that there's no way of switching it in or out from the transmitter or adjusting the gain from the transmitter as there have been um, in some of these in the past and um, are almost certainly there in, um, in helicopter gyros. It's the similar, it's same technology. Um, so it's, uh, that, that, that's a bit lacking as far as I'm concerned on this box. You've got to have a lot of confidence in it when you when you take off uh, 
that it's all going to work as expected and of course you're not going to know really until you get in the air whether you've got enough gain too much gain or, or, or whether there are going to be any problems um, personally I would like to take off with it switched out and then switch it off switch it on sorry from straight and level flight but uh, there you go I can't find a way of doing that um, one other thing worthy of mention you've got additional ports here marked AVR ISP it looks like two sets of three servo three pins but actually it's it's for a six pin adapter and it's for a, a firmware flashing interface so uh, at some point there may be uh, firmware updates or um, third party open source updates that, that, that one could put on it I have no idea but anyway that, that that's the box um, that's what it looks like that's what it does um, and as I say in the next video I'm going to be lashing up the high-tech gear and we'll see how that performs <laughs>